Hi, welcome to Encouraging Moments. I'm Tony Hare, and we're glad that you've taken out the time to join us today. We have a very exciting message just for you. So join us as we go into the message that's already in progress and be encouraged. Today, I want to know how far can you see? I'm going to be talking to you from the book of Hebrews. And uh, chapter 11 will be uh, where we will take our, our lesson from today. I want to know, or I will say this, that most of us have had the experience of visiting an optometrist. We've either gone ourselves, we've taken our children, our parents, uh, friends, or a significant other, and with each visit, the optometrist will get around to asking us at some point in time during examination, how far can you see? During the examination, he or she would place a piece of equipment in front of us that we would have to, you know, put our chin in. And when they place that piece of equipment in front of us, we were asked to look through different lenses as he changed or she changed them out. And we would be asked to read the chart of alphabet that's before us on the wall. The optometrist would change the lenses out on the equipment until our vision is corrected. What I want to know today from you, do you need, question now, do you need to change the lens at which you view the promises of God? Do you need to change the lens from which you view the promises of God? In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 and 14, the writer says that these all died, and we will get to who all those were. These all died not having received the promises. These all died having not received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. How far can you see? They saw them afar off. They saw them from where they were. How far can you see as the promises of God relative to your life? God has made you some promises. Do you even know where to look for those promises? Or are you going on what others say? Have you read the book? 66 books with promises in them for you. This thing about faith just didn't start, ladies and gentlemen, with us, with the New Testament church. This thing goes way back to the beginning. Faith. The word of God says in Hebrews chapter 11, 1 and 2, well, and 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is the substance, the expressed image, the confidence of things hoped for. The evidence, the divine assurance, the, the, the evidence, the evidence, the evidence, the evidence of things not seen. Then the word of God shares with us by faith, the elders those who died without <laughs> receiving the promise. The elders obtained a good testimony. They obtained a good testimony by faith. Then it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed, that the worlds were equipped. The worlds were equipped to serve its desired purpose, that the worlds were equipped. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. By faith, all of this is happening by faith. By faith. By faith. How far can you see 
as it relates to the things that you say you have faith for when it comes to God. How far can you see, ladies and gentlemen? How far can you see? Are you seeing through the lens of uh, if we were going to go back and, and look at Luke and, and look at it from the standpoint of the sower who went out to sow the seed? Are you seeing through the lens of wayside faith? You hear, you're hearing the word every Sunday. But are you acting on it? See that wayside faith, they don't act on it. They hear it, but they don't act. Are you seeing through the lens of rocky faith? No root, so you spring up. And it withers away. Your faith does. Are you seeing through the lens of thorny faith? You hear the word, you go forth. You go after you hear the word. <laughs> but you get choked by the cares of the world. You get choked by your own desires. Are you seeing through the lens of good ground faith? You hear the word, you keep it. See, and you bear fruit with patience. Lord have mercy. If we're looking back at 13 and said these all died, we're talking about Abel, we're talking about Enoch, we're talking about Abraham, we're talking about Sarah, because those are the five that he mentions prior to getting up to verse 13. Said these all died in faith. These all died believing. Now these didn't receive the promises. They didn't receive them, but it didn't have an effect on their faith. Lord have mercy. They trusted God. They trusted God. If you look back at verse 4, it, it, it'll tell you, it says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. We know the story. To which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified to him. Is it or wouldn't it be marvelous for God to be the one to say, Boy, they sure got some faith down there. God is your witness. Lord have mercy. Then, then, then look at what he says about Enoch. He says, by faith Enoch was taken away in verse 5. So that he did not see death, but was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. See, when you have faith, you leave something on record. Because you take an action when you have it. Your faith can be seen in how you function every day. So how far can you see? Can I see your faith? Can you see your faith? Can your neighbors see your faith? Can your children see your faith? Can your husband, your wife, can your enemy see your faith? Can your haters see your faith? Who can see your faith? Lord have mercy. Yes, 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 yes. It says he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. That's, that's, that's number one. But number two, he has to believe that God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. And what is the reward? The reward is forgiveness. The reward is righteousness. By faith. By faith. How far can you see, ladies and gentlemen? Can you see yourself walking in what you're asking God for? Can you see yourself walking in your healing? You lying in the bed, you in the hospital, you sick doctor telling you all kinds of stuff that medically is true. But by faith, can you see yourself out of the room, back at your house, walking around, at your job, in your church, shouting, giving God the glory? Can you see it from the sick bed? You have to see it from afar off. Can you see it? How far can you see? 
Verse 7 says, by faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, he moved with godly fear, a reverential fear. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to what? Faith. Noah became known as the preacher of righteousness. By faith, what are you preaching today? What are you preaching today in your actions? What can we see relative to your life in Christ? Have you taken the time to examine yourself? Have you done an assessment on you? Or are you steady asking God to give you more faith? He gave you a measure. You got to add to that. It has to grow. It can only grow by situations coming in your life that you have to apply it to. So while you're asking the question, why me? It should be you. You the one want your faith to grow. See, faith is watered uh, uh, by way of problems, issues, circumstances, concerns that require you to get on your knees and have a little talk with Jesus. You understand me? How far can you see? Can you see what you want? Can you see yourself in it? Or do you let the circumstances of life cause you to doubt it so much that you say, well, I'm going to pray for something else. Well, that won't for me. I guess the Lord didn't want me to have it. That's a cop out. Use your faith. Everything that God wants you to have, you can know about it. You open this book because it's right in here for you. Says here by faith in verse 8, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive an inheritance. Look at what he says. And he went out not knowing where he was going. That takes faith. That takes faith, ladies and gentlemen. Where has God asked you to go? And he just said, go. You turn around and say, where? You turn around and say, how far? You turn around and say, hey, am I going to stop and pick up something on the way? How? Well, where has God told you to go, asked you to go, commanded you to go, and you still where you are? Praying and asking him to do something for you. Nothing gets done for you in disobedience. God is a righteous God. It would have been crazy for me when I was in the game for me to uh, talk to the Lord about, Lord, please don't let me go to jail. Man, I'm illegal. And you know what I'm saying? So I just didn't pray anything at all. I just said, I'm going all the way in this too. <laughs> so Abraham went, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him of the same promise. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is who? Lord, have mercy. By faith, Sarah herself also, she received strength and conceived seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Remember, she laughed at first. But her and Abraham, even though his body was, hey, the scripture tells you right here, therefore, from one good man, from one man, and him as good as dead, talking about Abraham, was born as many as the stars of the sky in the multitude, even though they could see their situation. It didn't stop them from doing what they had to do to have a baby. They believed God. They trusted God. They knew he was true to his word. What about you? What are you asking God for today that you say you have the faith for, but your doubt blinds you? That you say you have the faith for, but because it didn't happen for cousin Susie, you're blind. What you say you have the faith for, because Johnny didn't get the job at the same company you going to apply for, you decide I ain't going to go. Because Johnny didn't get the job. They ain't hiring over them no more. All the jobs have been filled. Every 
every one of them can be filled. But by the time I knock on that door and sit down in front of the person that's interviewing me, there's an opening for me. Now I'm trying to tell you some good stuff. This happened to me in Butler, North Carolina. At John upstairs psychiatric facility, it's crazy that I had my, my, my first professional job really was at a psychiatric facility teaching school. It's God's way of trying to say, this is where you're going to be, you're going to get it together. <laughs> Not that he's going to put me there, but I'm going to get me there from the way I'm acting because if I'd have got caught up, I'd have had to play crazy so I wouldn't have to go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> hey boy when you're doing wrong you're always trying to find a way to get out you gotta be figuring that out cause people are out to get you everyday that's their job got to be out thinking them yes 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 after it talks about Sarah then it gets into the meat of our message then all these all died not having received the promise but they saw them afar off they were assured of them now, 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 the word of God says they saw the promises of God far off. Faith has a clear and strong eye, ladies and gentlemen. They could see at a distance. Can you see at a distance? The word of God says they were persuaded or assured of the promises that they were true and that they should be fulfilled. Do you believe God? See, do you really believe God? If you really believe God, you wouldn't be worried. You wouldn't be crying. You wouldn't be moaning. You wouldn't be complaining because your focus would be on where you're going. And because you have faith, you can see it afar. You already see yourself in it. So I see myself there so I can dance here. I can shout right here where I am. I can say, walk with me, Lord, walk with me while I'm on this tedious journey. Lord, walk with me because I'm not stopping. I'm going because I. Wow. Wasn't that an exciting word that you just heard? Now that you've heard the word of God, we hope that you are encouraged to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Now, if there's anyone out there who is out of the ark of safety, you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repeat these simple words after me. Father, forgive me of my sins. And God, I accept your son as my Lord and my Savior. Now, if you've said those words, you are now in the family of God. Now, go out, find you a local church that you can join and fellowship with persons of like passions. And remember, be encouraged. Mm -hmm.